and welcome to the Art Archaeologist channel for Grab Bag Saturday. Today we're going to be doing a beaded tribal pendant necklace. And so I went ahead and roughly laid out my beads and I want, I've got my ruler here and I like to work on felt. Stuff doesn't go rolling everywhere on felt. It's a nice thing to work on. And I want this necklace between 8 and 9 inches long without the cabochon. Just the beads alone, okay? And then I like to use beading wire, and I'll get beading wire wherever, whoever's on sale. So I've already cut a piece. Now, here's one side, so I want this to be 9 inches. I went ahead and just took this a little over 9 and then doubled it up, and then I added a little bit extra because you're going to, you want a little extra tail to work and close everything up. So now I use little crimp beads. This is a brand called Beadalon, and these are gold, and they come in all different colors. I've got gold, silver, copper, and bronze. And um, you need to have those to clamp down on your wire. And I would recommend using wire to make your pendants, especially when you're doing stone, because they're, they have more weight. And if you use fishing line or any kind of thread, they're going to break. So, you know, if you're going to plan on selling these, you want really happy, satisfied clients that are going to come and buy more stuff from you. So make sure and use good wire. All right, and it doesn't have to be expensive. A couple bucks a spool is fine. So I've got those two crimp beads on there. And then I've got my little jump ring, my little gold jump ring, and you put that on and then you go back, you back down through the two, gosh darn it, crimp beads. Okay. You can use your pliers for this. More and more I'm having to. Okay, so then I'm going to grab my pliers and put them on that jump ring and take this bigger tail. Go ahead and squeeze those in. I want a little bit of play in there. See that? Because you want things to move freely. And then these pliers I'm using are sawtooth and then down further from that is flat and then down further from that is a cutter. So these are three in ones and I love using a three in one. I don't want to have to keep putting down and picking up tools. Squeeze down on those crimps as hard as you can. Now there is a crimper bead tool. Then you end up with two flat. I got so much stuff here. You end up with your two flat crimp beads and your jump ring. They do have a crimp tool. I haven't seen them for less than 12 bucks. I just never bought it because this works fine for me and I don't want to buy stuff I don't need. Go ahead and get this ruler out of the way. And then I'm simply going to string all this side on real quick. And once I get all these beads on, then I'm going to measure this and make sure it's. I want to see exactly what it is. It's nice to line stuff up alongside a ruler on a piece of felt. It works, I think it works very well. And then when you're down here on this end, you've got this tail of wire. See that? You just want to take your beads and you want to feed it through the beads. And then that tucks that in and adds strength to your piece. And when all is said and done, all of it's going to be pulled snug. So there, see, that's all clean and finished your end now, okay? Very easy and quick. And then just follow, as you're stringing this side, you're following this side of the pattern. I need to stay in frame. <laughs> that's a challenge for me. I want you to see everything. Try not to hit your other side and disrupt your pattern. <laughs> I've got these really neat black beads. I got these. They're like, they look like really cool, really natural, cool beads. Um, they have these at Joann's. 
So if you don't have a Joann's near you, you can always go online. Okay, so now I think this got dropped. One, two, you can always count one, two, three. Um, <clears throat> okay, there's four. So I'm actually going to go ahead and put that in. Because then there's three on each side. That's what I mean about not disrupting your other side. <laughs> I went and did it. Okay, so there's all those. It's looking kind of short to me. Kind of quite short. So then you just grab your ruler. Yep, seven and a half. So we're a little shy. So I'm going to go ahead and grab, just to suck up some space quickly, I'm going to grab two more of these black ones. Actually, I have these really cool coffee stained bone beads. I have different, they weren't a dollar, they're just in this bag. I have a bunch of different ones that you could put these in a pan of coffee and let them sit overnight. You could heat them up for a while if you want. I would just pour hot coffee in a little bowl or something and you get really nice coffee stained bone beads. I get my bone beads at a place called Orr's Trading Post, O-R-R apostrophe S. And they are out of Denver. They're off of Bellevue and Hampton. I don't know if they're online, but I get all different kinds of cuts of bone bead. And a lot of them I leave and a lot of them I stain. They are higher end. But that's how you make more money. You make better jewelry. So I'm going to go ahead and add a couple more of these little stone round beads I've got here. And I got these at Michael's. Michael's is a fabulous resource for beads. I'm going to go ahead and put my pendant on now and bump that out of the way. Should have lined this up. Okay, now I'm at about eight and three eighths okay and that's perfect and then I'm gonna add a clasp which is really not gonna make a difference and then just go ahead and follow your pattern and come on back up the other side this parts pretty easy and then I did shake up my I always shake up my pattern and I've got an elephant on this side and a turtle on this side and I did the turtle upside down because he's like swimming. This bone bead has a crease in it. The wire is coming through and I do not want that. So I'm going to go ahead and trade that out. It could be the cut of that bead. I could end up continuing to have an issue even with a different one. But this one looks pretty good. So, pop that on there. Yeah, fishing line and all that stuff is just worthless for this kind of work. You definitely don't want, you know, I make them the same way. And I wear a lot of my own designs. And rarely do they, I can't remember one ever falling off my neck. So... And it takes time. You just learn from different people. So I've got this bead. I'm going to go right side up and upside down too because I really like to just have the same only different. <laughs> it adds interest. Okay, just keep going. I like working with big beads like this. My my tiny seed bead stringing days are over. I don't want to do it. I will leave that to younger, better hands and eyes. <laughs> so I'm going to do that. Now that I did these backwards and I did those backwards, I'm going to do these the same. Okay. Make that have some unity. And then... Sometimes your pattern rolls off. Felt is fabulous to work on. I really like it. It keeps your stuff 
nice and those beading racks that have the indentations they're all right I just really prefer this and they're like 33 cents a piece for a piece of felt cut eight and a half by eleven I'm assuming that is I have my ruler right here but I'm doing something else <laughs> want to just string all those up And then if you're like me, and let's say you stop to take a drink of coffee or you get distracted or something, just come in when you're done. Always just make a habit of doing this. Come in when you're done stringing your necklace and line it up and just go down the beads and make sure you didn't make a big mistake. Okay, everything looks good. I definitely like to put something smaller down here by my pendant because if it's big and there's nothing to break it up it just looks bulky and off to me so this is a nice balance down here and you'll get what I mean when you're making these okay and then take your I've got two more crimp beads sitting out here so I'm gonna go ahead and string those on lots of times I'll put stuff like this in the palm of my hand and it makes it so much easier and then I'm going to take my other jump ring and I'm going to string that on. See, and I probably could have done with a few less inches, but you need room to work at the same time. Don't let your jump ring get away from you like I just did. Okay, you don't have to, everything can be loose. That's not a concern. So you got your jump ring swimming around on there. Just come on back through your crimp beads and while you're down here take this up through a few beads right now. Just do it because it's lined up for you to do it right now instead of pulling this string all the way through and then running it back. It's much easier to do it now. We'll go one more. All right and then you want to grab a hold of this jump ring and pull that wire and you don't want to wrench on it really tight you want a little play in this end too right here where your jump ring meets your crimp beads but you don't want too much play so I like to kind of hold pin everything down like that and then I come in with my other pliers and BAM Smush that down nice and as hard as I can. And then you get this cool little flattened metal element at the end, which only your buyer is ever going to see that or notice that, if they even notice it. But I notice how things are finished because I make stuff. So it's, you know, it's probably more important to me than it is to anybody else. <laughs> so then I'm going to come in as close as I can. And these pliers see how they've got a divot where the cutter is this other side is as flush as it can be for the tool and then this side has the divot so you want to lay the flush side down to your necklace give it a whack so there's that extra wire and I really can't do a whole lot with this I could probably do some charms with it so I'll hang on to it it's a scrap worth keeping and then you want to make sure that that end you just snipped gets fit into the next bead down. Okay. Okay. <laughs> My voice sounds like I'm going through puberty or something. That was funny. All right. So there's that. And then you've got to do one more thing. Now I've got these pale bronze lobster claws which I really love these but and I put bright gold on bright gold jump rings on here and bright gold uh, crimp beads and then I can go bright gold bright gold bright gold but I'm not gonna I'm just gonna go ahead since I've got this bronze color in my necklace and I've got all this beigey stuff going on this bronze I think adds the most class of all the colors to your stuff it's just got a refined muted subtle elegance to it it's probably a little too much information 
Okay, there's a couple different kind of jump rings, and in my other jewelry videos, I use the kind that you open a different way, side to side. This is a, like a teeny tiny little keychain. And you just slip on that little lobster claw has a hole on one end and you just pop it on there and use your pliers to pull it around just like you would a key. You really need pliers for this. And it don't matter how old you are. Now something to guard against. I got the lobster claw on and then this started to come off just a tiny bit. There, so make sure that that doesn't happen. It just started to go down the threads. You don't want that. No big deal. No biggie. And there you have it. A beautiful piece of jewelry to wear or sell. And, you know, you can get cool beads all over the place. When you start keeping your eyes peeled for them, they'll show up. And with yard sale season coming, I get a lot of really cool stuff at yard sales too. So I hope you enjoyed this grab bag Saturday. And if you have not subscribed yet, please click the subscribe button below and click the notification bell. I do grab bag Saturdays and I also do tips and tutorials Tuesdays. So don't miss any of those. And thanks for joining me today and I will see you soon. Have a great day.